It sure was nice of Link to try and get in on the no-jump action, but I'd say it's about time we have more guest stars from the Kirby universe give it a go. And you know what? Let's knock out a few popular requests in a single video today. That's right, everyone. Today, our question is really three. Is it possible to beat Kirby, Star Allies, Guest Star, Bandana Waddle Dee, Maglor, and Adeline and Ribbon without jumping? As usual, our main target for elimination today are regular jumps, as denoted by using the move jump slash hover, not friend circle slash friend train jumps. I will tell you all what uh, each character's route had in terms of friend circle and friend train jumps at the end of the video, but we will certainly not be dedicating any significant amount of time to them. If we can get through each of these guest stars' adventures and beat Morpho Knight without any regular jumps performed by our player-controlled guest stars, I am prepared to call this endeavor a success. But who to check on first? How about Bandana D? Bandana D's journey begins with an opening level that is at this point very familiar to us. Bandana D, of course, gets past this very first part that requires no jumping at all, but that certainly can't last forever, and eventually Bandana D is met with a cliff. So, how does Bandana D overcome this obstacle? What is Bandana D's moveset? Bandana D's moveset is, with little exception, the same as the old classic Spear. As such, Bandana D only has one real jump replacement to speak of, the Spear Copter. Luckily, this jump replacement is pretty good, as it's able to offer us both good height and horizontal movement with even just a single use of the move. Which brings us to one of the Spearcopter's main weaknesses. It is, in most cases, extremely untenable to use while in the air. This means that for most intents and purposes, we cannot achieve infinite flight with Bandana D. That's not necessarily a deal breaker, but it is certainly inconvenient. One other inconvenience of the move is the fairly long charge required before Bandana D can actually perform the Spearcopter. This means that Bandana D's reaction time when called upon to use the Spearcopter on short notice isn't great. Nevertheless, the Spearcopter is overall a pretty good jump replacement that is more than sufficient to get Bandana D over this cliff, up onto these pole chains, and generally through the rest of this opening section. Alright, it looks like Bandana D is well on his way. Let's check in on Maglor now. Maglor also starts his journey with a familiar opening, though this time it's not one we've seen in Star Allies before. Instead, it's a recreation of the first level in Kirby's Return to Dreamland. And as any of you longtime viewers should know, this bodes quite well for us. So the level's looking pretty good, but what of Maglor's moveset? Honestly, playing Maglor in a no-jump challenge feels almost like cheating. We have here not one, but two great jump replacements at our disposal. The first one being the Maglor Surge, which sends Maglor flying forward at great speed. Whilst in flight, he has the ability to gain a bit of height. This move has the effect of not only being a very good jump replacement for wide open areas, but also greatly shortens the amount of time it takes to get through the game. And that's not even Maglor's best jump replacement. That honor goes to the Magic Sphere and its derivatives. That is because the Magic Sphere just flat out gives Maglor the ability to float and fly with ease. Like, literally, you just hold down the B button and gravity might as well not exist for Maglor. So like I said, Maglor's moveset is really almost too good, and I can hardly foresee anything posing a serious challenge to him, let alone this opening. So as two of our three passed their openings with ease, I suppose we ought to check in on the last one, Adeline and Ribbon. I wonder what sort of cute little obstacles she faces at the beginning of her journey. Oh. Well, 
I think we know who drew the short straw for opening sections. Well, if the terrain isn't going to do her any favors, let us hope that her moveset makes up for it. Given who Adeline is as a person, I suppose it's fitting to start with her painting, specifically the move Addo's Painter, which lets Adeline draw a boss to ride. Now as cool as the ninja and ice dude are, what really interests us today is her ability to draw Krakow. Anyone even casually familiar with Kirby would know, that boss is a flying cloud, and yes, Adeline is perfectly capable of flying her painted Krakow around to her heart's content. He doesn't last forever, but he does last for a really long time. I'd imagine there are very few obstacles in this game where Krakow's time limit would become a major concern. But if we do find ourselves concerned, Adeline and Ribbon can dance those concerns right away. I am of course referring to the move Fairy Dance. This is a nice little jump replacement that gives a decent bit of height, can be comboed infinitely, and grabs items when it's used just like the whip copy ability. Also, this isn't really a jump replacement, but I do find it generally quite useful that Adeline and Ribbon also happen to have one of the best blocks in the game. I don't think it can be denied that that is a good moveset, but does it get Adeline and Ribbon through this opening section? Yes it does. Thank you, Krakow. Well, it seems Adeline is going to be set for a while, so let's check back with Bandana D. Looks like Bandana D has reached a cave with one of those dream friend switches. Who will Bandana D befriend for this adventure? Unsurprisingly, it is Rick, Kine, and Koo. While their elemental augmentations don't help Bandana D's mobility all that much, they do make his attacks a bit more effective, allowing him to literally rain fire down upon his enemies. So, yeah, I'd say it's an improvement. Uh, just a bit later on, Bandana D foolishly tried to utilize this optional cannon, and ended up getting stuck in it. As it turns out, you can't get out of one of these cannons without either getting shot out or jumping out. Looks like Bandanity is going to have to restart his quest. And while we wait for him to get back to where he was, let's check in on Maglor. Looks like Maglor has got into a cave as well, albeit a different one. Here, Maglor faces down an old adversary of ours, Keys. <laughs> this particular one is set up in the exact configuration as the first one from Return to Dreamland. In that case, we were able to just throw the key where we wanted it. However, Star Allies' throwing abilities are a bit... lacking, to say the least. As such, we're going to have to pull out the old multiplayer teleport trick, which gets us through the door pretty easily. Maglor then flies through the upcoming sections with ease. But how's Adeline doing? Good question. Let's find out. Seems like she's doing pretty well. That spike-filled area has given way to a much more friendly plains, followed by a bit of a memory section, neither of which are much of a challenge for her. With that, all three of our heroes are set and ready to face the preamble to, as well as Wispy Woods itself, followed by King DDD. And they all get through that with flying colors. We next join Bandana D in a tropical archipelago. Here we encounter one of Bandana D's biggest weaknesses, water. Now you may be wondering what exactly causes Bandana D to be a hydrophobe. Well, that would be because Bandana D does not have a single jump replacement that works from the surface of the water. This means that a slip into the drink can prove to be a fate worse than death for our orange little hero. As such, we try our best to hop from landmass to landmass during this section, which given how far a single spearcopter can get you, proves to be a fairly simple task. Unfortunately, much like death and taxes, the water cannot be avoided forever. Yes, Bandanity is forced to plunge into the depths of it, which inevitably leads us to the resurfacing. Try as he might, Bandanity cannot get enough height from the surface of the water to reach this platform without jumping. Has our little friend failed us then? Perhaps not, because Bandanity has some friends of his own. Among them is a Blade Knight. This Blade Knight can use an upward slash to get up on the platform and through the door to the next area, thus saving our beloved Bandana D from the terrible fate of jumping. 
And one boss fight later, Bandana D is through with his tropical vacation. Meanwhile, Adeline and Ribbon find themselves in a bit of an annoying region. In essence, the enemies here rain down various hazards upon their enemies. This is especially annoying to an Adeline riding atop Krako, since a single hit causes Krako to disappear, and then likely causes Adeline to fall into oblivion. It's far from impossible, of course, but does represent a fairly annoying slowing of the pace. Immediately after that area is this area featuring giant moving chunks of land. Once again, this is an area that Adeline can certainly get through by merely exhibiting a bit of patience, though it can certainly take you by surprise if you're not expecting it. Now let's check in on Maglor, who by sheer coincidence is doing the exact same section Adeline was just on. And sheesh, that is an efficient way to get through that area. Maglor really is the easy mode of this challenge, isn't he? Back in the realm of mortals, Bandana D experiences pretty smooth sailing up to this windy section. Once again, we see the limits of the Spearcopter on display, this time for its poor reaction time. If this Waddle Dee doesn't want to be impaled on the spikes here, he has to anticipate the pits before they show up. Not an absurdly difficult task, but certainly a bit of a hurdle. It is worth noting that Maglor takes on this exact area as well, and it barely even registers as a blip on the difficulty radar for him. Lucky Maglor. Everyone makes it to Meta Knight and defeats him successfully. Next up, the Gem Bastion. Bandana D's journey through this area is remarkably smooth. Everything's kept at a pace where the Spearcopter feels right at home, and as such, Bandana D gets through the Gem Bastion with ease. Adeline's trip is almost as easy. As it turns out, Krako is great for navigating through these purple-hued halls. One point of interest ended up being this key room. Now, theoretically, this could have been easily overcome by simply using the fairy dance, but to be perfectly honest, I had not yet realized that the fairy dance was able to move keys. So, I instead resorted to multiplayer teleporting, which worked fine. Maglor, on the other hand, found Jambastion to be the most demanding chapter so far. Which, granted, isn't saying much, but still, it's a point I'd like to make. There's a section where Maglor has to get a key across these rising and falling platforms. Luckily, they move in such a way as to allow Maglor to successfully throw the key from one platform to the next, meaning that multiplayer is not necessary for this key. Oh, and uh, technically this key isn't actually necessary either, so, um... Oh well. <laughs> Let's move on to this section here, which is a bit tense. It's an homage to the Sphere Doomer sections from Return to Dreamland. Those are auto-scrolling sections. Star Allies tries to get across the same feeling by making the platforms here start to fall away as soon as you step on them. So that is pretty tense, especially since Maglor doesn't move very fast when using his main jump replacement. Of course, the falling platforms are the only real incentive to keep a quick pace, and since Maglor can easily fly indefinitely and therefore doesn't really need the platforms at all, the tenseness of the situation actually turned out to be a bit of an illusion. In any case, all of our three amigos end up taking down Zan Partizan and are ready to move on to Chapter 4. Bandana D and Maglor's journeys in Chapter 4 start with this key we've met many times before. And as always, with the power of friendship, the obstacle is overcome. Adeline's route begins a bit differently. And by different, I mean getting crushed by a giant ball of Waddle Dees. As it turns out, painting isn't generally a quick enough reaction to neutralize such a threat. A good thing the consequence is just a bit of damage, hardly the end of the world. What comes slightly closer is Bandana D's encounter with Goldon and Silvox. Yeah, he's not in danger of imminent death here since dodging is a thing, but even so, damaging these guys is pretty annoying, but after a bit of patience, their health is indeed whittled away, and Bandana D can go on to obliterate some mini-bosses. Meanwhile, we can find Adeline making an absolute mockery of an infamous section of Tawera, with the help of her Krako. She then makes a mockery of the real Krakos with her painted Krako. Good for her. Maglor and Bandana D make their way to the Krakos as well, and fare quite well against them. In the next chapter, Bandana D is faced with another wind section that presents the same problems as the first one. It too can be cleared, though. He then comes to this crushing cubes section, which plays right into his strengths. 
The cubes move very slowly, so this Waddle Dee can make it out of their way with much time to spare. Adeline and Ribbon also encounter the wind section, which proves trivial for them, since the fairy dance is a quick enough move with decent invincibility frames to uh, neutralize the obstacles. Meanwhile, it would seem that Maglor is nearly at the final boss, and is currently passing through this recreation of one of the later levels in Kirby's Return to Dreamland. It doesn't cause him much difficulty, but somehow a couple of his friends got crushed to death here. Hmm. Checking in on Adeline, it would seem that much of her entourage also got crushed in her unique section. She makes it through fine though, and is likewise knocking on the door to the final boss. Bandana D also makes it to the boss fight, although he too has somehow managed to get his friends crushed. Come on guys, you've got to be better friends than this. The game is called Kirby Star Allies, it is all about friendship. Come on, get your act together. Anyways. All three of our guest stars have indeed made it to the final bosses, and all three do manage to come out of these battles victorious. Meaning, that since we are ignoring friend circle slash friend train jumps, because quite frankly, they're boring, we have found that it is possible to beat Kirby Star Allies guest star Bandana Waddle Dee, Maglor, and Adeline and Ribbon without jumping. Oh, and for those of you curious, the friend circle slash friend train jumps for each guest came out to be 41 for Bandana Waddle Dee, 30 for Maglor, and 33 for Adeline and Ribbon. The discrepancies between those numbers come down to which friend train and friend circle sections actually appeared in their respective routes. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. But don't you leave just yet, because there is more Kirby No Jump content for you to experience today. I worked with another YouTuber named Waluigi Goes Wa on a video for a no jump challenge he did on Kirby's Epic Yarn. So I'd say now that we're done here, we should all go over to his channel and check that video out. I know at the very least I'm going to be there. But anyways guys, until next time, I've been Simicraft, and I'm sure I'll catch you in some infuriating challenges in the future. Goodbye.